Hello my dear friends, this is a painty cat, my name is Catherine and today we're gonna paint with a watercolor. We will create a composition with a beautiful blue sky and a maple leaves. This is a demonstration short version of tutorial where I just will show you techniques we're gonna use. For the real-time tutorial please follow the link in the description box welcome on my patreon and we will paint this composition in a real time with all explanations about technique and a color mixing paper i recommend to you for this tutorial have to be watercolor and uh, i'm using 300 grams one we starting with wet on wet technique it's a very common and very popular we placing fair amount of water on a paper and playing around with the different colors you can check on my channel video about how unbox watercolors and how to create samples samples so helpful because you can see you can understand what color you wanna use in your painting so here I basically using now two of them it's a cobalt blue and some different kinds of yellows also you can use dry napkin to control water on your paper. Another technique uh, you can see at the moment, I'm knocking uh, my brush on a palette, so I created a lots of random dots around. Dots can be uh, yellow, can be blue as well. And you have to wait now. First, you need to wait while watercolor spreading on a wet paper and second you have to wait while your background will completely dry. Usually I'm using hair dryer. If you want to use the same you need to be sure uh, air not too hot and also not too fast. Other way too fast air can move watercolor on a top layer of the paper and the painting can be different right so just be careful you know on the next step we're gonna create maple leaves you can use any kind of leaves for this composition as for me i was walking with my kids on a, a park and uh, there are a lots of maple trees there so um, my kids um, presented to me most beautiful ones, most beautiful leaves. I bring it to my home, I washed it uh, and uh, it's just now laying on my table. It's not visible on video, but it's very near to me. So I can use natural details from the real leaves. If you have any other type of leaves, it can be oak or birch trees, for example. You can also pick up the natural leaves from the parks around and you can use it as a reference on your watercolor composition. Important moment when you're starting to create maple leaves here, you have to be sure first layer, background layer, completely dried. At this moment you can keep edge between leaf area and a sky area. You can keep it really sharp. And we're creating one by one, leaf by leaf. If some leaf touching the previous one again you have to be sure previous leaf already dried also i will repeat on this tutorial i will repeat common mistakes in watercolor and i will demonstrate to you how to fix it 
easily and uh, how to turn your mistakes into features. About colors here. Oh, what a color! Have so many beautiful shades. So I'd say I will leave it up to you. It can be same as I used in a full tutorial. I will explain each color I'm picking in my box. Mostly it's a uh, red and yellow colors, but of course you can use uh, green as well. Also here we will discuss and learn how to create some reserved areas in the leaves. For example, here I just created two small holes into a leaf. I reserved their dry area inside of the wet one and it's looking as a small holes in a leaf. Common mistake about um, watercolor, I'd say the most uh, common, it's when we painting close to still wet area but we wanna to create there a sharp edge between two objects. Look at these two leaves. I just demonstrated how to fix mistake when color was spreading on an area I didn't like to. It's possible to fix, but it's also important to look from the distance and understand is it a really mistake, because even a soft edges between objects on a watercolor can look interesting. But again, you have to understand how to fix some issues on your painting. So I lifted up the wrong color while area was still wet a little bit and later it's possible to create more sharp uh, edge between two objects there when we will paint on a next layer with watercolor. Again, watercolor it's all about your patience. You have to wait each time, you have to wait when pre previous layer will dry completely. So the leaf I'm working on at the moment was dried. I put there next layer of clear water spread it everywhere on the area of the leaf and it's possible to add more details. Also important to remember you have to clear your water and brushes in time because for example before we already walked with um, you know, a couple blue for example just try to mix cobalt blue uh, and uh, cadmium lemon for example and you will see it's giving a green, right? So if water on your box not fresh and clear and you glazing, you creating layers and layers on your watercolor painting, it can give you a dirty look in the end. So easy advice, right? So easy to uh, follow it. But I remember it about myself when I was a student. My teacher came to me so many times and told me please get fresh water on your box. That means I skipped it so many times. I was just unfocused, right? I was focused on my painting but I forgot about technical issues. There is a technical ones and you have to remember. Paint with a clear water, with a clear brushes and get fresh napkins each 10 minutes. Next step here. I think leaves already looking good. So next layer. Again, previous layers have to be dry. So we can uh, paint twigs and branches. And the advice about this moment I can give you, try to use a different mixes. We have separated areas on palette, so we can create 
uh, brown plus blue, brown plus red, different tones of one brown, warmer tone and a colder tone. And I'm using cold and a warm toned brown next to each other. It's giving pearly effect and branches and twigs not looking as a sticker. A lot of time uh, I saw compositions where silhouette created with just a black and it's looking too flat. It's nice if you're really looking for this result, for this effect, but uh, when we creating natural shapes and we want to add more air into composition, we have to play around a different tones and a colors. For example, here, look at central branch. It's a deeper toned from the start on a left edge of the paper. It's going up and up and up and it's lighter, lighter and lighter. And a small tweaks behind it, deeper toned. Each time when a tweak crossing the bunch, I have to decide what is darker, what is lighter. Again now you can see small tweak crossing the branch line and I decided to create darker tweak with lighter branch. It's giving more air to your composition. Next step we're gonna work here. Uh, it's uh, those veins on the leaves and it's the stems that connecting leaves and twigs. Stem, it's a part of the leaf. You can check photos on the internet and there you can see that um, maple leaf always have a stem. So when uh, the leaf falling down, stem connected to it. Stem not brown, not the same brown as a twig. It's a lighter or even it can be green or yellow. So please create another mix for stems. Also about veins. Usually, usually when you will check the top side of the maple leaf, you will now notice that veins looking lighter than a leaf. It's true, but on my composition it's a moment when you're looking up, you want to look at sky, but there are leaves above your head. So you can see through the uh, maple leaves. This way veins will look darker because uh, it's more thick than a leaf. Leaf will be more transparent, more thin, and veins will look darker because it's just more thick. And as soon as all veins are done, all we need to do is to sign up our final painting. After it, remove tape. I'm usually doing it with a hot air. I demonstrated it so many times. It's just a safe way to remove it. And our painting is done. Welcome on my Patreon for real-time tutorial. Also, if you like this video, please thumbs up. It was a painting cat and I wish you all the best. Bye-bye.